Jalen Smith trying to go to the four <laughs> corners, take the air out of the ball. 35-7 as we start the second half and a pooch kickoff. And it's short. It's taken by Jacob. Really good first half for Justin Herbert after a slow start. He misfired in his first three, but had some help in doing that. But he's been yeah. really good ever since. He's been outstanding throughout the first half of the game. I anticipate more in the second half. I do think as well, though, you know, Bruce Barnum talked about the four corners and taking the air out of the ball. I think we're going to see some run game here from the Ducks. They want to continue establishing that dominance, the physicality of their offensive line and how they operate with the pistol. Oregon was scored 58 last week against Bowling Green. From the Ducks, 30. And here is Tony Brooks James through the line. First down, Oregon out across the 40. Houston Barnes on the tackle for Portland State after Brooks James gets 11. And Oregon from the 41. Ducks over 350 yards now, total offense. Tony Brooks James looking for a block out across the 45. As the fourth tight end has come in, Hunter Campmoyer for Oregon after a gain of six. I like the patience of Brooks James. He's allowing his blockers to get set up. Here he goes again. Breaks a tackle. Down the sideline, Tony Brooks James. They say he stepped out. At the Portland State 33 first down Ducks is Tony Brooks James. Nearly electrifies the crowd, he gets 20 more. It would have been hard to imagine if he didn't step out. He was so close to the sideline, took hits from two different defenders. Then a third, he says, taste these fingers. I'm not sure he did step out. Really close. tight. From the 33, Herbert. This is Taj Griffin, the ball carrier. And he runs close to a first down, may have enough. And it seems that was a point of emphasis at halftime for Mario Cristobal and Marcus Arroyo, the offensive coordinator. Run the football. Yeah, and that doesn't surprise me one bit with a 28-point lead. And they've put so much of an emphasis on getting the offensive line huskier and making sure they've got that ground-based power. And the true freshman at left tackle, Pene Sewell which Mario Cristobal couldn't rave enough about when we talked to him yesterday as Taj Griffin gets a first down. One more look. Was he out of bounds? Oh, yeah, the, the outside of that right foot. It does look like it tapped right there on the paint on the sideline. At the 20. Oregon, 149 yards rushing. Last time they played Portland State, they ran for over 500 yards. Herbert to Schooler. And Brendan Schooler pushed out inside the 15-yard line. The Ducks last played Portland State September of 2010. Oregon ran for 528 yards. They had nearly 670 yards of total offense. LaMichael James ran for three touchdowns and 227. From the 14. Taj Griffin, stutter step, first and goal Ducks. And Panacea is playing some football. I mean, the, the offensive line overall is playing well, but check the left tackle here. Second career starter, he's a true freshman. 360 pounder, makes contact, keeps the legs driving, gets the hands up inside using that leverage and as a fulcrum. On the rollout, Herbert, it's caught toward the pylon. Jalen Red, and they're going to mark him inside the one, second and goal. I hope the Ducks ready to do some more push-ups. <laughs> Last week he did 290. He's already at 105 today with possibly 42 more coming here if the Ducks can push it in. Two points of off offensive emphasis in this half. Run the ball, catch the ball. It's such a simple game. <laughs> Tony Brooks James runs it into the end zone. Touchdown, Oregon. Fifteenth career for Tony Brooks James in his first in 2018. Your center has to be good when you run the pistol because of the fact that you want to run up the interior. 
down the teeth of the defense. And Jake Hansen, one of the best centers in the Pac-12 conference. Win the extra point. 70 yards for Oregon in nine plays. And the majority of the damage coming on the ground. Zach Emerson, the extra point. 42-7, Oregon cruising. The Pac-12, leading the nation with over 500 NCAA championships. 42-7, Oregon over Portland State as the Ducks have had eight drives, seven touchdowns today. Not a bad average. Pretty good. I mean, Mario Cristobal wasn't exactly thrilled about it when he spoke to Lewis before he went in the locker room. It was that one drive that just stuck with there him. There was that one drive, Lewis. The energy has been there from the outset with Oregon today. And Duck six of six in the red zone. As the kickoff from Zach Emerson. And this one into the end zone for a touchback. Out to the 25 for Portland State. Time now for our CDW well orchestrated play. It's the big one that the Vikings were able to get. Pass protection was there initially from the offensive line. Jelani Eason ends up evacuating the pocket. Works towards the short side. Sees Charlie Tomopeyu all the way down the field. Some of those backups on the field for the Ducks. Brady Breeze, the safety, rotated in. The entire defensive front had rotated out. Excellent ball right on the money. And Charlie T takes it 71 yards for the Vikes. Jelani Eason continues the quarterback as Tamopeo on the sidelines for first and 10 from the 25. And the numbers on Eason in the first half. And the give. Antoine Williams is hit behind the line and dropped. Strung out nicely. Adrian Jackson, the freshman from Denver. With Lamar Winston out today for Oregon. Jackson's a guy who could see some extended playing time today. He's been getting trained as both an inside linebacker and an outside linebacker. And the fact that Winston wasn't able to play today, that's part of where Jackson has been seeing some more time as an outside backer this week in practice. Second and 12. After the loss of two. On the ground. Trying to bounce it to the outside, but little running room this time for Carlos Martin. Jalen Jelks gets up 
along with Kalana Apelu on the tackle for Oregon. And when there's hesitation from the backs, I mean, watch Carlos Martin here. He gets it initially starts to stutter, and all the pursuit from the Oregon defense, it just gives them an extra beat to try and get there to wrangle him in as a tackler. You want to see from the pistol more of that immediate vertical attack, being more decisive as a runner. Third down and 12. Play clock inside 10. It's part of the game plan to shorten the game for Portland State. Letting it roll down as Jelks trying to chase down Easton, <laughs> who escapes, looking, throws deep down the field. The jump ball, and it's broken up. Emmanuel Dagby tried to come down with it, and he was covered by Thomas Graham Jr., the sophomore corner. I like the decision from Easton. First decision he made was to run away from Jalen Jelks, and then there he knew he had a one-on-one -on -one opportunity between Graham and Dagby. And early in the career of Emmanuel Dagby, he's shown an ability to make some of these contested catches. Not able to elevate there. Graham kind of had his, his elbow, his forearm on the shoulders of Dagby. And there is a flag thrown and the play blown dead from the Oregon side of the field. And the Ducks may have had too many men. Illegal substitution. Defense. 12 men in the formation. Five-yard penalty remains. Fourth down. So penalty against Oregon. I'm and not, for 12 men on the field. I'm not sure if there was really a 12th man or if they just thought Jalen Jelks was two people because he <laughs> initially missed Jelani Eason there and <laughs> able to get up off the ground, chase him down, and get more pressure. Well, I saw Darian Felix try to sneak off, so I'm guessing he was the 12th guy. <laughs> Ben Neisner, the punt, Dylan Mitchell on the return. And Portland State downs it. Ducks get the football back near their 40. It's all Oregon and Eugene. Casey. Casey, Anthony, all right. Cool. Anthony, right on. All right. So we cra yeah, let's crack another egg. <laughs> we can't get this anywhere else in town. Apparently just gravy and sausages. I need to make sure I smear some of this. You are a card holder. Uh-huh. Then you can take your card and simply strike the Pac-12 logo. And it flashes. And it will pour you a perfect beverage. 
<laughs> it kicks it up a notch. It's good stuff. You eating again? <laughs> really? Getting the full experience here, inside and outside Austin. It, what, what kicked it up a notch there? What was the uh, the name of the the stuff that you put on the your breakfast yesterday? The hot sauce, tapatio. Tapatio. That that's what it was. I put some tapatio on my burrito there. It was it was tasty. So so what time did you escape to the uh, parking lot for burritos and not let us know? <laughs> Once <laughs> again, Roxy, you see what you see uh -huh. the pattern. That was maybe. Are you surprised? 8:30ish. I am not. 8:30ish. I see. It was an 11 a.m. kick. It was a different vibe in the parking lot, though, because the uh, yeah, there we go. A little oh. tapatio, a little tapatio there on, on my burrito, baby. Sure tasted good. Looks like it did. <laughs> Trouble with the snap. Tony Brooks James has to go back in Oregon territory to jump on it. But that was. Um, it was a different vibe. There's a lot of breakfast burritos outside. Mm -hmm. Not your normal with your steaks 11 and burgers. Kick. Makes sense. Early kick. Late kick here through Justin Herbert's feet. Loss of 13. Brings up third down and 16. Back at the Oregon 40. Nine minutes to go. Third quarter. Game one of our quadruple header on Pac-12 Network today. Herbert. Under pressure, and he's sacked. Good surge by the Portland State front, and Noah Yunker with the sack. He's known as an overachiever by this coaching staff. You see him continuing to work, even though initially he was blocked, but just made the effort to get off that initial block from the offensive guard, Shane Lemieux, then surging towards Justin Herbert. A sophomore from Bend with the sack and a three and out for the Oregon offense. Only the second time today. Blake Maimon on the punt for the second time. It's actually not Maimon this time. That is Tom Snee with the punt, gets an Oregon roll. And the Ducks right near the 20. Will down at Portland State with the ball. Anthony making friends. Where's that cake? Last Happy night. birthday! Rough day for Kevin Sumlin and the Arizona Wildcats in Houston as they lose earlier on a 9 a.m. Pacific kickoff in Houston. Khalil Tate, 341 yards, but two picks. And ground game was held in check by Ed Oliver and the Houston Cougars today. 
So the Cats off to a slow start after losing at home to BYU last week. Jelani Eason continues at quarterback. Empty backfield from the 20. Eason to the outside. And rolling after the catch is Darian Green for a short pickup. Seen some impressive things from Eason in the game today. And it was a training camp battle between he and Davis Alexander. We haven't seen Alexander in today's game yet. And he, he may be a little banged up. He took some big hits versus Nevada last week. And the patience and no urgency from this Portland State offense today. As Portland State losing at Nevada in a huge 42-7 hole here in the third quarter this week. Eason escapes toward the sideline, and it's too high. Tried to get it to Dagby, who was covered by Thomas Graham. And it's third down. And for Portland State, next week they'll be back home hosting the College of Idaho. And I'm going to go on a limb and say they're going to try to snap their 15-game losing streak next week. Well, and decision-wise at the quarterback position, I mean, you know, if, and Bruce Barnum, didn't tell us this, but if part of the thought with getting Eason and Velasquez so much time today is that Davis Alexander did leave the Nevada game a bit banged up, it makes sense. You know, that today's result will have nothing to do with whether or not they can compete in the Big Sky record-wise for that championship. On third down, Eason incomplete. Trying to squeeze that in to Darian Green, who is well covered by Kalana Apelu. Well, Levitt loves to blitz from the slot initially. Adrian Jackson was out looking like he was going to play defense from a passing standpoint. Then at the last second, just stemmed towards the outside. Ben Neisner on to punt. And Mitchell back to return, standing near midfield for Oregon. And Neisner. Tries the line drive, and Mitchell, Dylan Mitchell, fighting his way out near midfield. Oregon football near midfield, 42-7 Ducks.
This field moment presented by 76. This one, fueled by the eye discipline of Justin Herbert. That pump fake draws the defense towards the short side. Kano Dillon finds the void in the zone. And then from there, this turns into Debo. Bullies his way into the end zone. Caught the hot shot from Herbert. Continues to churn those legs away. First down carry by Travis Dye and the freshman across midfield. Creeps into Portland State territory brought down by Anthony Adams. And Herbert's been dealing today. 20 out of 26. One of the completed. touchdown passes to Kano Dillon. All right. He completed nine in a row at one point there. And he started 0 for 3. All right. With two drops. Dye breaks it to the outside. Travis died down the sideline. He's gone. Touchdown, Oregon. 49 yards for the freshman and the younger brother, a Troy Dye, who finds the end zone. <laughs> there were some big moments in last week's game where you could see a little brother. Travis was close to doing some big things. Shot out of a cannon, turns the corner. Shows that explosive burst that had Jim Mastro, his running backs coach, so excited. First career touchdown for the freshman, Zach Emerson. Remains perfect on his extra points, 49-7 Ducks and a studio update from Chris Francis. LaVisca Chenault on fourth down. A little gamble by the Buffs pays off. Steven Montez also has a touchdown pass. 14-7 Buffs late first quarter. Guys, back to you. Well, it didn't take long, Chris, for Oregon to get into the end zone again. 49-7, the Ducks with the lead. One more look at the run by Travis Dye. And once he turned the corner, you see the speed that Mastro was telling us about. He's got some jump cut ability. Look the cheerleaders. They're paying attention. They're still watching. They want plays to be made by these young RBs. It was funny just hearing some of the quotes from Troy Dye talking Here's about his younger brother. Big brother on the right, little brother who scored the touchdown on the left. Travis had a few nice moments in last week's opener when the media asked Troy about it, especially the touchdown. He said, well, he's still a bum. So he's still got that big brother mode when he thinks about and talks about. Got a humble little, little bro. Yeah. This will be a touchback. It'll come out to the 25 for Portland State. And the congratulations for Travis Dye. Oregon with three rushing touchdowns today and four passing touchdowns for Justin Herbert. Bruce Barnum and the Vikings. Who bus down here this morning? Will bus right back up to campus at the end of this one. No need for any big Americana tour stops on this one. It's a it's the shortest bus trip they'll have this year. Maybe stop in Salem on the way. Huh. Would that be I your your itinerary if you were migrating the Americana tour? Jelani Eason, a quarterback in motion, goes Hoffman. And the Vikings keep it on the ground and not much running room. Gary Baker on the tackle for Oregon. Drayton Carlberg also in on the stop for the Ducks. And for Bruce Barnum, look, they play two FBS games to start the year, right? Nevada last week, Oregon today. And they drop down a level to get the College of Idaho next week. But it's all about the big sky. It's all about conference play and trying, first off, trying to end the run of consecutive losses, right. which... They'll try to do against the College of Idaho next week. But then building toward conference play, and that's what it's really about for the Vikings. That's what it needs to be about. He, the youth on his team, he knows there's opportunities for them to get something out of today, regardless of whether they win or lose. Eason sacked. Carlberg. And a big hit also coming in to help out. But Drayton Carlberg, the first man there for Oregon. Also... Popo Amuvai in on the sack as well. One of the reasons Jalen Jelps came back this season was to continue to improve his mechanics as a pass rusher. The variety of moves he could make 
We see every time there's a Drayton Carlberg who gets home, a Justin Hollins, Jalen Jelks is right there in position near the QB also. They don't realize it's 49-7. They're they going to stay care. engaged throughout the entire ball game. Cheering on the twos, some of the ones over there is Eason complete. Just shy of a first down and a late flag. The pass to Bo Kelly and the redshirt freshman from Scottsdale. Javon Holland on the tackle, but will check the flag. Personal foul. Rough in the passer. 45, defense. 15-yard penalty. First down. Gus Cumberlander called for the personal foul to hit on the quarterback. That's the fourth penalty of the day on Oregon. So surpassing last week's three flags. Cumberlander, as they ran essentially an ET stunt, the ends are going first, tackles are coming around. He came from the interior, got into the tackle. Had a clean path, but just hit him too late. Empty backfield from the Portland State 49. Quarterback draw for Eason. Nice move. Close to a first down. Chased down by Austin Faliu. We haven't seen as many designed runs today for Eason as, as I anticipated we might see early in the game. But when he's taken off and run, whether designed or otherwise, it's been really effective. You understand why he got so many starts as a true freshman last year. Second and short. The quarterback position for the Vikes in much better shape now than it was last year where when Eason had that opening day start, it was actually a slot receiver. It was the backup quarterback for a while until Davis Alexander was in position to take over. Tom Opeo goes in motion. Quarterback run. Taking a big hit, but a first down is Jelani Eason. Jelks along with Jordan Scott on the tackle. First it's been, down Vikings. It's been part of the way, Roxy, that Bruce Biden was telling us he reshaped the roster with this program, right? Where, you know, there was a bit where they got very old. They got a little long in the tooth where that was part of, especially that 2015 season that was so historic. They were a veteran roster over the last couple of years. He went away from getting more JUCO guys in, and he went to a younger approach between last season and this season. A lot of underclassmen getting work, but you can see that there is real talent that he's been able to assemble here. Empty backfield again for Eason. And there is a flag as the play clock has run out. Delay a game against Portland State. Delay a game. Offense. Five yard okay. remains. First down. And also a lot of financial challenges for this Portland State program. And Bruce Barnum, and that's why the last number of years, they've had to play two FBS opponents each season. Nevada last week, Oregon this week. They money have, games. Yeah, money games. And it's scheduled out through 2024. They'll have two FBS opponents this season. They'll play Oregon again coming up in a few years. First and 15, Easton under pressure, and it's incomplete. Dagby the intended target as we send it down to Lewis. Well, you guys are talking about the uh, bus uh, that Bruce Barnum is uh, now famously taking his players on. Do you remember on the conversation this week he mentioned some of the places they passed by, like Alcatraz in San Francisco? I think he said they'd been by multiple zoos. They've even taken three buses through a drive through outdoor safari. How about that? I don't think we've ever heard that in college football. <laughs> but the story I love the most was him hiding the power plugs back in the day on the buses. He, he mentioned that there were 17 power plugs on one of the buses. He covered them up with a cloth water, snacks, and eventually everybody ran out of power and they had to start talking to, to each other and playing games. He thought it was a great way for his team to connect. Ultimately, after about six trips, the players caught on to it and said, Coach, we want the power back. But great stuff about traveling the, these uh, American roads on buses with your players. That's some of the challenges again. And Bruce Barnum looking to cut the budget and save money wherever they can to help support this program, and that's one of the ways they do it. And that's part of the, the charge that he's gotten from his administration there at Portland State. And it does sound like some things are beginning to turn from a financial standpoint. Timeout by the Vikings. But one thing he did talk to us about was one of his goals, they're having some stadium issues about where Portland State is going to play. And 
Bruce Barnum talks about one of his big goals and maybe his primary goal right now leading this Portland State program is to get Portland State their own stadium. As for a number of years, it was Portland Civic. Now it's become Providence Park where the Portland Timbers, they share the stadium with the Timbers of the MLS. And this is the practice field for Portland State where the majority of their home games this year, they're actually playing about a half hour away from campus at Hillsborough Stadium. They have five home games this year. Four of those games we played at Hillsborough Stadium. They'll have one at Providence Park, which is in downtown Portland. But for Bruce Barnum, he's talking about my extended goal here is to get us our own stadium for Portland State football. And initially, when he had the job, they had cut the operating budget for the Vikings. And just year by year, that's been remedied more and more with some of the donors who've begun to support the program at a higher level. Third down, Eason, sacked by Cumberlander. The junior from Ellenwood, Georgia with the sack. And it's fourth down. Well, it's tough duty for an inexperienced offensive line and had four seniors they lost from last year to hold up against a talented pass rush by the Ducks. Even though it's not all the starters in there, but look, Cumberland, Cumberlander's in there over the nose, just like we saw Jalen Jelks earlier on. You get into some of those sub packages defensively, you're going to have smaller guys rushing the interior. Ben Neisner on to punt, sophomore from Kent, Washington, who oddly enough picked up punting on his own back in 2016 and a walk on with a good kick that bounces out of bounds and pins Oregon back. Ducks with a football. Let's get our first crack at the antitudes for this week. Some of the big storylines I saw coming out of week one around the Pac-12. KJ to JJ for Stanford. Do the Cardinals really have a lethal airstrike? The one down for some of the new coaches. Krista Ball, Herm Edwards got their first wins. This Pac-12. And then youth is served. Some of the underclassmen quarterbacks taking center stage. JT Daniels has a big one coming up this evening against the Stanford Cardinal. Braxton Burmeister is first action today. The sophomore quarterback from La Jolla was one for five for 11 yards last week against Balls or against Bowling Green rather. As Travis Dye the carry with a long touchdown run a little while ago. But Burmeister, who made five starts last year at quarterback for Oregon, and again the Ducks were hoping to redshirt him last year, but the injury to Herbert motivated them to put Burmeister in as the starter with Herbert out for that extended period of time. Final minute of this third quarter, Burmeister again on the ground to Travis Dye. Bring up third down for Oregon. Last year, Burmeister, two touchdowns, six interceptions, but he did run for three scores. I was struck by the way Mario Cristobal described some of the discussions they had with Burmeister because he was initially put in the game last week where it seemed like things were in hand and then actually pulled him from the lineup when the offense sputtered and then Bowling Green scored. And not that the game was close, but he wanted to make sure they were putting the game away. Then eventually they put Burmeister back in the lineup and Mario Cristobal told us that he they take a confrontational approach as coaches and he didn't mean it in a negative manner. He, he meant it in a positive way where they don't mind confronting situations. They're very honest and upfront with their players about what they're doing well, what they're not doing well, and they discuss everything in detail. And you hear that when Lewis Johnson is talking to Cristobal down on the field, the level of detail he describes things in. George Moore is the injured duck, the junior, the JC transfer from the College of San Mateo in the Bay Area being helped over toward the sideline. An injury here late in the third quarter puts a damper on things for the Ducks. As Moore, the backup left tackle to the true freshman, Pinay Sewell. Brian Addison in motion. Burmeister, play action to the outside to Tabari Hines. Escapes, trying to stretch it out for a first down. He's run out shy of the marker. And that takes us to the end of three. Oregon, 49. Portland State, seven. The Ducks looking to run their record to 2-0 and for the third consecutive season.
Otis Day and the Knights have invaded Austin Stadium. My yes, man. the third quarter shout. Of course, Animal House filmed right here in Eugene. A lot of luminaries in the video that they play here at Austin Stadium as shout plays throughout the stadium. Joey Harrington. Dan Fouts, Ahmad Rashad, Dennis Dixon, Neil Everett. Neil Everett. Crowd eats it up. Gotta love the pageantry. Marcus Mariota, of course the duck is in it as well. Recreating that scene from Animal House as we start the fourth quarter, 49-7 ducks. And a punt for Oregon to start the fourth quarter. Nearly blocked, but Blake Maimon gets it off. A low line drive that takes an Oregon bounce. And it's down by Tony Brooks James, who's on special teams. The late games on Pac-12 Network at five just up the road. J.B. Long, Jeremy Bloom and company. Oregon State and Jonathan Smith's home debut against Southern Utah out of the Big Sky. That's at five o'clock. And then late tonight, San Jose State. The Spartans and Brent Brennan brings his ball club up from the Bay Area to take on the Cougs at eight with Guy Haberman, Ryan Leaf, Cindy Brunson in Pullman for that one. Coming up next, again, Washington and North Dakota from Husky Stadium. Ted Robinson, Yogi Roth, Jill Savage ready to bring you that one. I anticipate the dogs taking out a bit of frustration. A double pass, <laughs> Bo <laughs> Kelly. Charlie Tomopeo, and he's brought down another big play to Tomopeo. He had to catch it from a standstill. That's the reason he didn't score, because we've seen that he's got plenty of speed. He fainted down towards the inside. Defense reacts towards the, the pass into the flat. Tomopeo, it's another big play for this Vikings offense. 47 yards to the Oregon 19. Tomopeo now. Four catches, 121 yards, and a touchdown. It is his second consecutive 100-yard game to start the year in the third of his career. Empty backfield for Eason. Quarterback run. Eason straight ahead, stopping, starting, and Russell down inside the 10 by Gary Baker. 11 more for Portland State, first and goal Vikings. A lot of Eason can pick him up and put him down now. It's some nice wiggle to him in the hole. Exciting athlete. <laughs> See the <laughs> little frustration. Jim Levitt. Defense has played well today. They've done some good things. It's been the two QB. big plays, really. Yeah. And both to Talmapeo. From the eight, first and goal. And on the ground. Looking for a lane. Carlos Martin gets down to the five. Maybe a bit too patient by <laughs> Carlos Martin. Referenced this earlier. Maybe, yeah, he, he was thinking double pass there. Tom Apeo. Once he saw it wasn't their proper decision. Second and goal. Sergio Hoffman stays in as the running back. Again, extending the clock. Hoffman, hit, drives forward, gets a couple before he's pushed back. Baker in there for Oregon again, along with Amuvai. I wonder if this one's starting to set up for a, a four down goal line stand opportunity. Third and short coming up here. And I don't think the Vikes need to get too fancy. It's a good opportunity for your offensive line. If they can make a play. These are the types of moments that you can take back on the bus with you back to Portland. And now a timeout for Bruce Barnum in Portland State. Third and goal upcoming. Portland State trying to get into the end zone again.
Number 23, Oregon, against the Portland State Vikings. Jalen Red, touchdown Ducks. To the corner, he's in. Touchdown, Oregon. Tom O'Pell, touchdown, Portland State. Herbert drives the corner, touchdown. All they're doing is scoring touchdowns when they touch the rock. 49-7, Oregon, Portland State, a third and goal. Crowd's still into it. This is still a moment. They're inside the five, third down. No one can accuse this Oregon team of being disinterested today, that's for sure. To the end zone, touchdown. Jelani Eason to Charlie Tomopeo. And the second touchdown catch for Tomopeo today. It's going to set up as a huge season for Tomopeo. Right there in the slot, great stutter step. <laughs> I mean, that's a tough matchup for an FBS defender, let alone once he gets into big sky play. Tom Apeo, he's a, he's good. Yeah. He's really good. That's a legit talent. The running back and a defensive back in high school, he was all state on both sides of the football. Second team all big sky last season. Cody Williams for the extra point. And it is 49-14 Ducks. Eason to Talmapeo for the second time today. Forty nine fourteen Oregon with the lead Lewis Johnson with a report on a historical site here in Eugene. Well, as big as these college football weekends are here in Eugene, there are so many people in this town who love track and field. That's why they call the city track.